Hello and welcome to Bayside Church. My name is Leanna and I'm the Director of Multimedia and Graphic Design here at Bayside. I want to invite you to fill out your Connect card today. You can text the word CONNECT to the number on the screen and fill out the prompts. You can also send a prayer request by texting the word PRAYER to the same number on the screen. We would love to pray for you and your loved ones. Lastly, if you would like to donate online, you can text the word DONATE to the same number. You can also go directly to our website at BaysideChurch.net to give online. Or you can mail your offering to the church address on the screen. If you're in the service today, you can drop off your offering in the black boxes in the back as you exit. If you're new to Bayside, we would love to invite you to our newcomer's lunch on August 2nd at noon. This lunch will be offered online and we'll have lunch delivered directly to you. Once you receive your lunch, you'll tune into Facebook where you have a chance to meet our staff and learn a little bit more about Bayside. Leaders, I want to let you know that we're holding the Global Leadership Summit here at Bayside, August 6th through 7th. You have influence, whether it's at work, home, or in your friend group. The GLS helps you expand your leadership skills and also learn new opportunities and ways to expand them. Or if you feel more comfortable when you purchase your GLS ticket, you also get a link to watch the GLS online. For more information, you can visit our website at baysidechurch.net. If your next step is baptism, you can register online at baysidechurch.net for our next baptism being held on August 16th. Once again, we would love to thank you for partnering with us financially and with our community. With your help, we're able to reach out to all Safety Harbor and beyond. One of the ways we're able to partner with our community right now is through Pinellas County's Lunch Pals. By changing your lunch plans, you can change a child's life. For more information or to sign up for the webinar, you can visit our website at basechurch.net. Once again, thanks so much for watching. And for more information, visit our website at basechurch.net or our social media page at basechurch sh. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning. It's great to see you guys today. I want to welcome those of you that are online with us as well. Uh, my name is Stephanie, if I've not had a chance to meet you, and I'm the director here of Adult Ministries at Bayside. I'm honored that Pastor Terry invited me to share and speak with you today. Hope you've been enjoying this series that we're in throughout the summer. It's been called the um, Summer Mixtape. And we've been going through the different psalms, or songs of the Bible. And so we're going to wrap up the series today. But just to give you a quick little recap, Pastor Terry started the series for us about five weeks ago, and he shared the song of ascent. And he shared Psalm 122, and he shared about how we're all a part of God's tribe, And then the week after, Pastor Tim shared with us, if you remember, it was right after the 4th of July, and Pastor Tim shared with us a little bit of a history lesson. (laughs) So thank you for that, Pastor Tim. But he also shared uh, the psalm that he used to share with the paratroopers in the army before they would jump out of the airplane. 
And it was Psalm 91 where God is our refuge and our fortress and that our protection comes from God. Pastor Randy shared the following week, and he shared the Psalm of Lament and the story of David and Bathsheba. And he talked about David's lament over his sin with Bathsheba. And then last week, I hope you had a chance to check out the sermon Pastor Ron Bell shared with us, and he really did such a phenomenal job. I um, shared a little bit of his testimony with us. I really appreciated that. But he shared with us that no matter what situation or circumstance that we're in, that we can have confidence in the fact that God is always going to take care of us, right? We can keep our confidence in God. So today, again, we're going to wrap up this series, but before we do, Pastor Randy mentioned this um, just a few weeks ago when he shared with you guys that when we first started this series, Cody and Leanna, they're part of our creative arts team, they thought it would be a great idea if the staff put out their own mixtape. So like if you had your Walkman and your cassette tape in there, what five songs would you put on your mixtape? And this was really very challenging because they didn't really give us any guidelines other than the fact that it was five songs and they had to be church appropriate because they were going to share it with the church. You might have seen the post going around on social media. But just for fun, I thought we would play a little game this morning. It's not going to cut into our sermon time, don't worry. But just for fun, I'm going to show you one of the songs that the staff picked. I'm going to show you the song. It's a pretty popular song. And then I'm going to give you some multiple choice answers. And I want you to try to guess which staff member picked these particular songs. So if you're watching online, I want to invite you to just put your multiple choice answer right in the comments section. Um, but if you're here in person, you can either call out the staff person that you think it was. You can clap for them when I say their name, or you can just stay quiet, whatever you feel comfortable doing. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first song is an amazing 80s hair band that we all know and love. The band is Bon Jovi. And the song, it's a beautiful rock ballad. It's I'll Be There For You. So which staff member picked this song? Was it A, the office administrator, Roxanne Freed? Was it B, our beloved facility manager, Bob Barter? Is he the Bon Jovi fan? Was it C, Mr. Rick Koontz, our children's ministry assistant? Or D, the children's pastor, Jeannie Zire? So they're weighing in, they think that it's Jeannie, and you guys are right. <laughs> Jeannie is the Bon Jovi fan. Well done. Our second song, we've got two more. The second song, very popular song. I'm sure it was at the top of the charts for many, many weeks. The song is Simple Man, and it's by Leonard Skinnerd. So who picked this song? Was it A, the missions pastor, Bob Burns? Was it B, our senior pastor, Terry Rowland, C, the creative arts assistant, Leanna Lash, or was it D, Cody Bracey, the worship pastor? Is he playing Leonard Skinner at home? <laughs> so weigh in on your decision. Who was it? Any guesses? It was Terry. It was Pastor Terry. Yes. Well done. B, Pastor Terry Rowland. All right, this is the last one, and this is for all the marbles. So if you get this right, you get 10,000 points. The song, this is a beautiful song, a 1992, a beautiful hit. It was in a movie that many of us have seen. The movie is The Bodyguard. The song is I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Beautiful song. Was it A, the family ministry assistant, Kelly O'Brien? Was it B, myself, Stephanie Armstrong? Did I pick this fan favorite? Was it C, the summer intern, Irene Engel? Or was it D, our executive pastor, Randy Spence? 
They think it's me. If you're weighing in online, put your guesses in. A, B, C, or D. If Dean was here, I would do a drum roll. The answer is D, Pastor Randy Spence. And don't worry, you're not alone in this because never in my wildest dreams did I think that on his playlist, Pastor Randy would have a Whitney Houston hit. He also had a song by Bach and a Christmas song. He had Oh Holy Night on his playlist. And I'm like, it did not even cross my mind to pick a Christmas song. But you can just tell from the list of songs and just from playing this game about the variety of different music and music genres among the staff. But there's also been a variety of different psalms that we've been looking at. So some of the psalms have been psalms of hymns and praise, right? Praising God for his power and his glory. Some of the psalms are wisdom psalms, and they're meant to teach us. Others are um, royal psalms, and they talk about the spiritual worship of kings. And then Pastor Randy shared the psalm of lament, right? Some of the psalms are lamenting over sorrow and sadness. The psalm that we're going to look at today is actually a messianic psalm. And so this psalm and the messianic psalms, they have to do with the Messiah. Who the Messiah is are a part of his life. But along with the diversity of different psalms, there's also different authors of the psalms. Many of the psalms that we've looked at, I think probably all of them were penned by David, King David. But some of the psalms were also written by Asaph, who's a musical director that David appointed. Some of them were written by the sons of Korah. And even Moses and Solomon penned a few of the psalms. So the psalm that we're looking at today, it was written by David. We don't know if he wrote it before or after he was king. We can tell that from the psalm, he's experiencing some intense suffering. Um, But we know that that happened both before and after he was king. Um, But what we do know is that David is writing this psalm a thousand years before the death and the crucifixion of Jesus. And so while David is speaking about his own situation and his own suffering, many scholars believe that David is actually prophesying beyond himself and on to Jesus, who this psalm fully agrees with. And so really we're seeing David, he's more than a psalmist and he's more than a king. He's really a prophet of God. And he's prophesying about events that would happen a thousand years later. And so I want to invite you to open up your Bibles, if you have them, to Psalm 22. We're going to read verses 1 through um, 21. If you have the YouVersion Bible app, um, you might want to pull that up as well. We do have the sermon outline there and the scriptures for you under the events tab. If you're watching online, it might be helpful if you have a second device and you can access that. Um, There is a link right in the post for the YouVersion Bible app event, but we're going to be going back and forth through the Old Testament and the New. Um, The words will also be on the screen, though, so you can follow along that way as well. So Psalm 21, I'm sorry, Psalm 22, right away the title says, For the Director of Music to the tune of the doe of the morning. Depending on what Bible version you have, it might say deer of the morning or doe of the dawn. But in Hebrew, that's also translated to mean morning star. And morning star is a symbol for the Messiah. So right away, we know that this is a messianic psalm. In Revelation 22:16 it says, "I Jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star." So Jesus is the morning star, right? It's about Jesus, it's about the Messiah. So let's read this together. "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" Why are you so far from saving me, 
so far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life, from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. And we're going to stop there. But you can tell from this psalm the intense agony and the suffering that the psalmist is experiencing. Right? He talks about his physical suffering. They pierce my hands and my feet. But he's really putting an emphasis on the emotional suffering that he's experiencing here, right? You can get a feel for the emotional agony, the cry out to God for rescue. We know that Jesus experienced the same type of suffering when he was on the cross, both physical and emotional. And isn't it true sometimes that emotional pain can be even harder to work through than physical pain? Usually with physical pain, there comes quick healing, but with emotional pain, that takes work, right? You have to work through that. I've seen it in Celebrate Recovery. One of the things that I get to do here at Bayside is I help with our recovery ministry, and I work on my own recovery. But a lot of our time isn't spent on necessarily the physical addiction, whether it's abusing drugs or alcohol or food or codependency. We address the physical addiction, but we spend most of our time on the emotional pain, right? Working the steps and working the principles. We do a spiritual inventory. We make amends so that we can work through that emotional pain. And it's hard and it takes work, but we do it so we can become more like Christ. The Bible actually says that we can rejoice in knowing that we share in the sufferings of Christ. It's in 1 Peter 4.13, and it says, Rejoice that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed at the revelation of his glory. And so we're seeing both physical and emotional pain. And today we're going to unpack some of this psalm, and we're going to look at five different scriptures that point to the death of Jesus and point to the crucifixion of Jesus. And there's more. Um, this sermon today is going to be a little bit different than sermons that I have shared with you in the past. It's not really one, two, three, and how do I apply this to my life? But right now, I'm going through classes for ordination. And I'm in Bible and theology classes. 
And when I read this psalm, you guys, it really blew my mind. And it really challenged me in the way that I look at scripture and the way that I read scripture. And so my challenge to you today is that I hope that you will spend more time studying this psalm and pointing out more points, more scriptures that point to the crucifixion and point to Jesus. But I hope that it challenges you as well. I hope you learn something new, but it challenges you in the way that you view scripture and the way that you see God's word. So today we're going to look at five different scriptures. The first one is in verse 18. It says, they divide my garments among them and for my clothing, they cast lots. This event is actually recorded in all four of the Gospels. It's actually the only event that's recorded in all four Gospels. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they tell about Jesus' life, about his birth, his life, and his death. And so at the crucifixion, at the death of Jesus, Matthew records this exact same thing happening. It's in Matthew 27, 35, and he says of Jesus, when they crucified him, they divide up his clothes by casting lots. Mark says, they crucified him, dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. And in Luke 23, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divide up his clothes by casting lots. My favorite gospel account is actually in John. And it says that because this happened to Jesus, because they divide up his clothes by casting lots, that it was actually a fulfillment of the scripture. Meaning that it fulfilled this psalm that we're reading today when it happened to Jesus. And he actually quotes this psalm, this exact verse in the New Testament gospel. In John 19, in verse 23 and 24, it says, When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. And this is where it is. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. And so right here, the Old Testament is pointing to the New Testament, right? They're working together. And for me, even still in the midst of my studying, the Old Testament can be a little intimidating, There's so much in it. There's so many foreign concepts and things that are sometimes difficult to understand. And I've heard people refer to the Old Testament God and the New Testament God. That the Old Testament God is about wrath and judgment for sin and the unfaithfulness of the Israelites. And that the New Testament God is all about grace and mercy and love. But the truth is, is that God is unchanging, right? The same God in the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. He's unchanging. In the Old Testament, there is so much that we can learn about Jesus from the Old Testament scriptures. It makes up 75% of the Bible. And so right here, we're seeing that fulfillment of the prophecy and the Old Testament pointing to the new. The second scripture that we're looking at is in verse 7. It says, All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. Jesus experienced the same type of rejection that David is talking about. In Matthew, it says that those who pass by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. And Mark says in his gospel that those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. 
Jesus knew what it felt like to be criticized and to be rejected. And I imagine that in these moments, he probably felt very alone. Just a week prior, people were cheering his entry into the city, right? They were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and cheering for Jesus and the disciples as they entered the city. And now, just a week later, these same people are cheering for his death and cheering for his crucifixion. His disciples had scattered at this point, and you can imagine that he felt alone. Maybe you've experienced some type of criticism or rejection, and it can feel very lonely. Maybe it's been at your workplace or in a group of friends. You felt like you've been singled out. But it can feel lonely, right? The truth is, though, because of what Jesus did on the cross, that we're never alone, right? Jesus is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And he's with us in our suffering. He's with us in the good times. In Joshua 1.9, it tells us to be strong and be courageous. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And in Matthew 28, when Jesus tells us to go and make disciples, he also tells us that surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so we can have confidence in knowing that Jesus is with us. The third scripture is just one verse later. That was verse seven. It's in verse eight. And it says, he trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. And we can tell from this verse the kind of relationship that David has with the Lord. Right? The scripture tells us that he delights in him, that he trusts in the Lord. In Matthew, it says of Jesus, he trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. And so David and Jesus are experiencing the same thing here, right? They're both trusting in God and they're hoping for rescue. Rescue that we know that David receives based on the end of this psalm, but Jesus has to endure the cross. And that really takes us to the next point and the next scripture And it's the very first verse that the psalmist records when he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus quotes these same exact words from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's in Matthew and Mark. And if you had a chance to see our Good Friday service this year, we went through the last seven statements that Jesus makes from the cross. And this is actually the fourth statement that Jesus makes when he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And again, we can get a feeling for the type of relationship that both David and Jesus have with the Lord, right? They don't just cry out to God, help me, God, deliver me. When they cry out, they say, my God, Right? It's almost like God belongs to them. He is their God. And again, David receives rescue from the Lord, but Jesus has to endure the cross. Jesus has to pay the penalty for our sins. And that's when he makes his seventh and final statement on the cross. And our fifth scripture is in the Psalm in verse 31. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. In Hebrew, this is also translated into it is finished. And that's the seventh and final saying that Jesus makes from the cross. It is finished. It's in John 19, 30, right before Jesus dies, he declares that God's plan has been carried out, right? His plan to defeat sin once and for all, to bring salvation to the world has finally 
been carried out. And Jesus tells us that it is finished. When God first created mankind, he created us in his own image. And he created us to have a relationship with him. An intimate and authentic relationship. But when Adam and Eve sinned and sin entered the world, it separated us from God. That sin separated us from God. And since then, God has been devising a plan for a way to bring us back into a right relationship with him so that nothing would separate us from the love of God. And so through his people, his chosen people, the Israelites, would come a Messiah, a chosen one, the anointed one, that would be born to a virgin. He would live a perfect and sinless life, and he would be the perfect sacrifice. And he would be the savior of the world. And God did it because he loves us, because he wants a relationship with us. Before we wrap up today, when I was studying for this sermon and just going through this psalm and different commentaries that I found on the psalm, I came across this commentary by Charles Spurgeon, and this thought was so amazing, and I love what he points out here. But he points out verse 6, and it says, But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by everyone, despised by the people. And he points out that we have seen these words someplace else in scripture. And it's the words, I am. And it's in the story of Moses in Exodus. At this time in history, God's chosen people, the Israelites, had been in slavery for 400 years. They were in slavery under the Egyptians, and at this time, the Hebrew population was rapidly growing. And so Pharaoh puts out a command to kill the Hebrew baby boys. And so Moses' mom, in order to save his life, she puts baby Moses in a basket, and she sends him across the Nile towards Pharaoh's palace where Pharaoh's own daughter receives baby Moses. And she raises Moses as her own son. And so here we have Israelite Hebrew Moses being raised under Egyptian royalty. And this conflict really plays out later in Moses' life when he becomes a young man. He sees one day that an Egyptian leader is beating and brutalizing one of the Hebrew slaves. And Moses loses it. And he actually murders and kills this Egyptian leader. And then he flees Egypt. And he goes to a place called Midian. And Moses is in Midian for 40 years before God calls on him again. I really feel like that's a, another sermon about waiting on God's calling, right? And being patient and being prepared for God's calling. But he's in Midian for 40 years and God calls on him from the burning bush. And that's where we're going to pick up in the story. It's in Exodus chapter three and verse four, it says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land and into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Right? He's always with us. I will be with you, and this will be the sign that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Right? It's the great I am. It's the same I am that is going to free the Israelites from 400 years of slavery. The same I am that is going to part the Red Sea and make a safe passage for the Israelites to escape the Egyptians. And it's the same I am that created the heavens and the earth and that left his place in heaven to come to earth in complete humility. As a baby boy born in a manger to be the savior of the world. But in verse 6, he doesn't say, I am who I am. He says, I am a worm and not a man. Not even a man. Jesus was willing to go to the most lowly place. To be a worm and not even a man. To be criticized and rejected. To be beaten and crucified. Even though he didn't deserve it. And he did it all for you. And for you. And for those of you that are watching online. And he did it because he wants a relationship with us. Right? God wants an intimate and authentic relationship with us so that when we need him, we can cry out, my God. Or in times of gratitude, you can cry out and say, thank you, my God. And I just wonder, are you at a spot today where you can reach out to God and call him my God? Have you made that decision to put Christ at the center of your life and to accept him as your personal savior? If you haven't done that, we want to be sure to give you the opportunity before you leave or sign off today. We do not want you to leave here without making that decision for Christ. But maybe you've made that decision, but there's parts of your life that you haven't fully surrendered to God, right? Maybe you're still holding on to the past or you're holding on to a financial issue or a health concern or a relationship that's not aligning with God. And maybe God wants you to surrender that to him. He wants full care and control over your life. Cody's going to lead us in a time of worship, and I just want to give you the opportunity to meet with God in these next few moments. Whether you're online or you're here, I really just want you to spend a few moments with God, just asking him to reveal what it is that he's calling you to, what your next step is. I'm going to come back up, and I'm going to wrap us up in a prayer together, Um, but really I want to invite you and encourage you to really let the Spirit speak to you in these moments.
ever want to leave And oh, I'm not here for blessing And Jesus, you don't owe me today about these scriptures that point to the death and the crucifixion of Jesus, but it didn't stop there, right? Thank you, Lord, that Jesus rose on the third day and that because of Jesus, now we can have a right relationship with God, right? It's because of what Jesus did for each and every one of us that allows us to have this relationship with God. 
So let's pray. Father, today I just want to thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful for your grace and your mercy, Lord, and your love. Thank you for your word and the way that you teach us and the way that you work in our lives. Father, today I just want to pray for my friends online or here today, Lord, that they need to make that decision today to put you at the center of their life. So, Lord, today I pray with them and we admit that we are sinners, Lord, that we need a Savior. We believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to be the perfect sacrifice, that he died for our sins, Lord, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have a fresh new start and a new relationship with you. So, Father, today we accept Jesus as our own personal Savior. Lord, I also want to pray for those of us that need to surrender something specific to you today, Father. Whether it's in our finances or our family, with health concerns, or just what's going on right now in the world. Father, we trust that you know better than we do. And we want to give you full care and full control over our lives. Lord, thank you once again. Thank you for the relationship that we're able to have with you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you were willing to make, that you would do it all for us. Father, we love you and we thank you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank those of you that were able to join us online this morning. And if you made that decision, that first time decision to follow Christ, I want to invite you to text the word yes, Y-E-S, to the number on the screen. We would love to just give you some resources to help you in your new walk with Christ. And if baptism is your next step and you want to make that decision today, I want to invite you also to text the word baptism to that same number on the screen and we'll have a pastor follow up with you this week. Well, thanks again for watching. We hope you have a great week.